Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this weekly ag weather update brought to you by Ag Carolina Farm Credit. Well, as of midday on Sunday afternoon here, uh, we can see that we had some major, major snowfall, and this was the major feature we talked about in last week's video. Some of the snowfall amounts as we got into the overnight hours on Sunday and early Monday morning were topping two feet in some locations, but you can pause the video and take a look at your uh, nearby city here to see how much fell. It was an incredible event, and I'm impressed with how well the models picked up on this. Uh, more than a week ago to kind of tell us what was going to be happening there. Now, I wanted to give you the, the bigger perspective. Let's step back and see where this whole system went. You see, it started in Texas. Parts of Texas actually got 8 to 10 inches of snow there around Lubbock. And this, then as the system kind of spread on off to the east, we really saw the snowfall picking up in parts of North Carolina, parts of South Carolina, but really into Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And a widespread region in there that's well over 18 inches of snow. Now, in addition to that, check this out. These are what the winds were doing uh, on Sunday. Some incredibly strong onshore winds there uh, in uh, parts of, of eastern North Carolina, really up there around the Cape. And as a result of that, the National Weather Service reported some of the locations right there on the Outer Banks seeing anywhere between 55 and 70 mile an hour winds. So this system kind of did it all. And in addition to all that snow and the wind, look at the incredible amounts of rainfall we saw here across the south. Parts of Texas, Louisiana, well up above four inches of rainfall. And if you didn't get the snow there in North Carolina or South Carolina, you got the rain and it dropped overall uh, between one and two inches of rain across a big section of those states. So this is a pretty powerful uh, low pressure system, took its dear sweet time getting across the country and is causing some major, major problems. Now I want you to keep this in context as we go into the forecast because this is what the next seven days looks like. Now, some of this precipitation that you see I just circled there is from the remnants of the first system, the one that we had over the weekend that's finally leaving. But as we look over the next seven days, I'm watching another system going to form right in through here. Now, the details on this one as it forms next Friday are still a little bit up in the air, but it looks as though right now that low pressure system is going to go running right up the east coast again, bringing in another chance at precipitation. But this time, because of the warmth with this one, it's going to be a rain event. So I'm my, now my big concern is, over for flooding issues as the snow is melting and as new rain is piled on toward the end of this week. So with that, let's kind of get on into this. This next animation is going to start to have at 5 a.m. We're going to be watching what we're going to see here on Monday at 5 a.m. progress throughout the rest of the day. So here's the system as it leaves. So here we are 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So I wonder how many kids are going to go to school anyway. Uh, but still, uh, we got some leftover snow there in North Carolina and some nearby rainfall. So this tells me that by the time we get into mid-afternoon, this is now 5 o'clock on Monday, much of this should be done unless you're right there in the coastal area. Now after this finishes, you can see the low getting off there. This is now Tuesday. Things are relatively quiet. They're going to stay quiet until we get through about Wednesday. On Wednesday, we're going to watch this system right here form and maybe by Thursday pushing on off toward the Carolinas. Let's take a closer look at that though by looking at uh, the European model. So what I'm going to animate for you next is the next several days from the European model. Let's just show you where that first system leaves. So there, it's gone by the time we get into Tuesday morning. Things are relatively dry throughout the day on Tuesday into Wednesday. And look, see there in Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, that's the next system taking shape. We can see it's going to be spreading widespread but relatively light showers in the early morning through midday uh, time period on Thursday. Maybe a little bit more snow there for parts of Virginia. Now look right in this area. You see by the time I get you into Thursday, watch what happens Thursday into Thursday night and Friday. This is where our next system there is Thursday night and Friday morning gets going. Now that particular system is forecast to move through the Carolinas by the time you get into Friday afternoon and evening. And it's another relatively slow mover, not finally getting out of there until Saturday evening. And as it does so, it has the chance, I'll just walk you back and forth here, at bringing another round of heavier rain on top of that snow melt. So my concern is in this area over the next week or so uh, to be dealing with the potential for flood threat, both from melting snow uh, and then from this next system bringing in some rain. Now, I'll say after that, the pattern doesn't really slow down too much. We kind of keep active, keep bringing systems through, uh, but uh, beyond this next system, things are kind of a little too hairy to give you an accurate forecast. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take a look at what the jet stream tells us. So this is the whole kind of the whole of the northern hemisphere here. 
Now, why I'm showing you focused on the Pacific Ocean is because I want you to pay attention with me the shape of the jet stream. You see, when the jet stream broadly flows from the west to the east, we call that zonal flow. And when we have zonal flow, that a lot of times means we have a strong southerly storm track across uh, the United States and as it goes zonal out west here, instead of being highly ridged trough amplified like that, as it goes more zonal, we also tend to have a little bit of a milder uh, time period across much of the country. So as I animate this forward here, just watch what you see. We see that overall the jet stream tries to stay in that configuration over the next 10 days or so. So let's see what that means in terms of our weather. Okay, 500 millibar troughs and ridges, here we go. First system's finally getting off, there it is, finally getting off the coast here by the time we get into Tuesday morning through midday. Behind it, little ridge moves in, but right after that, see a little shortwave trough right in through there? That's that little precipitation maker that we're going to deal with uh, Wednesday into early Thursday morning. So that's kind of, I guess what we could call round two this week. But the bigger event is right here. So this is now Thursday night. See the trough developing down here in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma. The low pressure center gets going right out ahead of that. And watch as I animate forward, that trough pulls right through that area. And that is where we're getting the uh, end of the week rain and the start of next weekend. So again, flood threat's my main concern. But do you see this deep trough plunging here into the Gulf of Alaska? Well, that's gonna help with the strong zonal flow underneath that to the south of that. And that just lets some ridging move into the middle part of the country. So see this? Now I'm on the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th. This is a nice sustained warm-up for the central and eastern half of the country. Now by the time we get into the 20th and into the 21st, I see things changing again. And we got to talk more in detail about that in just a few seconds here. But we do have a nice mid-month kind of warm-up here before things kind of go back into a very unsettled pattern as we move toward the Christmas holidays. So let's kind of talk about this in terms of temperature anomalies first. Now, as we start this off on Monday, December the 10th, certainly a lot of cold air in place, but let's move this through Tuesday here into Wednesday. So you can see we hang on to that cooler air across the southeast and east coast through the middle part of this week. But look at the warm up happening behind this. See it? This is now Thursday into Friday. So my point is, is as this next system starts to work its way through, there's a lot of warm air out ahead of this, warmer than average at least. And as a consequence, we're melting that snow and we're going to put more rain on this toward the end of the week and weekend, which is what's going to give us that flooding threat. But what we see is that overall, now we get into the 16th, 17th, 18th, we kind of get out of that extreme cold pattern that the eastern half of the country had been in. And here's the 20th and 21st. Now at this point, the upper level trough digs back in and watches it get you 22nd, 23rd, 24th, we get kind of this return to some cooler air. And I wanna talk to you about why that is. So check this out. Watch the animation on the left first. I know the one on the right just played, but look at this. This is the current position as of Monday morning of the polar vortex. It's elongated, just like this. And it's keeping an active storm track across the east, and it's keeping things cool across the east. Now watch what's going to be happening to the position of that polar vortex with time. So we know that as we start off, you know, the overall position is something like this. But as we move forward, watch. See, as I get you in here toward the 15th, 16th, and 17th, now the polar vortex is kind of shifted like that. Now what does that mean? That means a relaxation of the pattern. That means more zonal flow into the west coast. And that just simply means we lose some of the high amplitude trough ridge, trough ridge pattern we've had that make it so cold at times uh, over the end of November, beginning of December. Now, we know that that's not going to last forever. And watch as it get you past the 18th, toward the 19th, and into the 20th. At this point, the area we're going to watch will be right over here for the potential for what we call a sudden stratospheric warming event. And that again displaces the polar vortex such that by the time we get you out to the 23rd, look, it filled right back in to our original position, which means the little warm up we're going to be seeing coming through, uh, if we're tying it pretty closely to the behavior of the polar vortex, will be relatively uh, short lived and we'll go back into that kind of cooler pattern toward the end of the month, really getting into the week of Christmas. So that's one of the dominating factors controlling our weather right now. Okay, from there, I want to show you this. You see, as we end up, as we end, I should say, December, get into January, we're watching a couple things. 
And the dominant features are going to be this, this Motokai El Nino, which is warm here, but cool to the south of it, and the really warm temperatures we have right now in parts of the North Pacific. Now, why I'm concerned about this is I think that more often than not, this is going to favor a jet stream pattern that's going to do this. And that overall keeps the region that I'm kind of circling in here with a relatively cooler pattern compared to average. So we have some support in that in our long range European model forecast, which was just released this past week, kind of came out and showed a very similar pattern for the month uh, of January. So I'm expecting to see quite a few more colder outbreaks and some more wintry precipitation for the Carolinas as we stretch this out another 45 days or so. So that's some, some definitely some support uh, in that flow pattern there. Now, I want to finish this up by kind of just cluing in on what's going on in South America. So we know we do grow a lot of crops in the Carolinas that are in competition with South America right now. So if you notice, I just kind of circled Brazil here. Over the last week, things were relatively wet across a big section of Brazil. They've had a phenomenal start to their growing season, so uh, their first crop soybeans went in just fine. They've been maturing. They, everything has been going quite well throughout a big section of Brazil, uh, which means they're going to get that first crop out on time, meaning that second crop, which is a corn and cotton crop. Big ag producer, uh, big ag crops for the Carolinas as well. Well, I think it'll go in on time for uh, Brazil. Now, over the next 15 days or so, though, look at this. Brazil right now is forecast to have this region uh, be drier than average. But remember, we're going into this time period with quite a bit of precipitation there. It will be quite wet on the periphery of this as well. We have this pesky front kind of hanging out down here, parts of Uruguay and northern Argentina as well. And Argentina's had a much rockier start to the growing season uh, than Brazil has. But I wanted to give you that South American update before we wrap this one up. So with that, I'll go ahead and finish this video. We at Ag Carolina, thank you for your attention. Hope you look forward to our next video update coming out next week. Thank you.